Great Wall was very cool. I was going to say. <laughs> One of the things I'm most proud of is the cabinet we've assembled. I mean, you've got extraordinarily talented people in each of these fields. A lot of them are doing such a good job that they don't meet with me much because uh, they're like the good students in class. <laughs> they are just handling their business really well. Well, uh, hello everybody. It is good to see you guys. We try to do a cabinet meeting every two months. The meetings run about an hour and a half. What we'll do is talk to a lot of different folks within the White House, uh, the policy folks, the chief of staff's office, the communications office, uh, and find out what are the important initiatives that we want to talk to the cabinet about, um, and also talk to the cabinet as well about the issues that they think are important to discuss with the president. Um, so there's a series of internal meetings to discuss that, and we um, hammer out an agenda after that. Iraq, Afghanistan, the Asia trip, jobs. I think, th I think that there should probably be a ro robust discussion of job creation. This is a huge kind of six, seven weeks that's coming up, um, and a lot of the budget and the, obviously the war decision and a bunch of other things that are coming down the pike. So, each president has the discretion to decide who is in this cabinet. Um, there are the, f the heads of the 15 executive departments who are always in the cabinet. These are the people who are in the line of succession after the president and vice president. And then there are a number of folks uh, who have cabinet rank. Uh, in our administration, that would be the head of OMB, EPA, the, the chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, the U.S. Trade Representative, and the ambassador to the United Nations. We haven't had coffee service in the past. Maybe because it's an afternoon meeting, they want to give them a little caffeine. I'm not sure. I've worked for the president since he was in the U.S. Senate, so I'm very used to sitting behind him at meetings. But to now sit um, in a cabinet meeting uh, in the historic cabinet room, you're just surrounded by the history of this, this institution. It's humbling. Cabinet offices were created as soon as the Constitution was ratified and the government was established in 1789 under the new Constitution. The first cabinet meeting, I, I understand, from 1793, the president had his four cabinet members there. We now have 25 people around the table. Each of the cabinet members um, sit in a certain seat depending on when their apartment was created. It's still tradition that a cabinet officer have the opportunity of taking the chair away, uh, himself or herself, to buy the chair from the government. It's one of those great souvenirs of being a cabinet officer. The cabinet meeting is one of the few times that I'm aware of where the Secret Service allows the entire cabinet to be in one place at one time. As you know, during State of the Union addresses, we typically ask one member of the cabinet to sit out. These are closed sessions, and the president really welcomes Frank um, unvarnished uh, advice from his advisors. I want to, number one, make sure that they know that they have my ear. The second thing is to reinforce a real strong sense of camaraderie that the cabinet members have built among themselves. What's going on? When I, when, I, when I hug him, it means a lot more yeah. than sending him an email. There still is something to the, the human interaction that you only get from in-person meetings. Well, I, I don't think there's any substitute for the entire cabinet coming together. These cabinet meetings are an incredible way for everybody to communicate, to, for everyone to really understand what the issues are, and to help us all get on the same page so that we can advance the president's priorities. Today we're going to be focusing a lot on jobs, uh, because obviously with the economy is in, in such a hole, uh, one of the things that we want to make sure of is, is that we leave no stone unturned when it comes to helping people get jobs. What we've typically done is bring the press in at the end of the meeting. The cabinet meeting is an important symbol of government at work. The primary focus of our discussion today, though, had to do with the same thing that Americans uh, sitting across kitchen tables all across the country are focused on, and that is jobs and the economy. You would think that in a world like the one we're living in, where you can communicate with anybody in the world at literally a flick of a mouse or, you know, some other picking up a cell phone, that you wouldn't need a lot of face-to-face -face meetings. But in fact, I think that uh, it's not only 
As important as it always was in the era before uh, instantaneous communication, but to some extent even more so, so that people can look each other in the eye, they can watch the body language, and they can work together to get uh, to the resolution of whatever the issue is. So these cabinet meetings um, give everybody a chance to do that. This is one of the biggest problems, that people walk out of here without their blackberries. So now I have to actually go find out who all these blackberries belong to. So, all right, so Chu has walked out without Carol's walked out. <laughs>